and hello. Now, this is not an actual broadcast. What this is, this is a pre-recorded video that I am going to use to try to explain the proportions used in ma making 3D miniatures. Now, you might look at typical miniature and on first glance, okay, that, that's a person. It's only when you get closer you realize these proportions are off. Well, I'm about to explain why they're off. This, on the left, we have a typical uh, pewter figure from, you know, a couple decades ago. It's a, as it says, two-sword war dancer. On the right is a uh, sketch of normal human proportions. You'll notice that the miniature's head, hands, and feet are huge and the torso is actually slightly shorter and wider. Now the reason for this, if the head was the size it would be in reality on a miniature, the details would be so small that trying to paint it would be pretty much impossible. Meanwhile, the hands, they'd be almost invisible and I don't care how you would be printing it, individual fingers would be non-existent. And then finally, the feet and ankles, even if you printed it from the best plastic, it would be incredibly prone to snapping right there at the ankles. And even in the old days, when they were making them out of pewter like this one, you had similar problems. If you tried sculpting a miniature in the real world with the proportions of a normal human, you would end up with a miniature that would bend over just completely on its own. You'd have hands that were so small that anything it held would have to be so small that it would just, a single touch would break it off or bend it. And the head would be unpaintable, but just too small to even deal with. I mean, here is a little set of sample measurements. You can see that here, even allowing for the fact that as an elf from Games Workshop that's an unusually tall head you know I kind of crimped it a little bit the head is still nearly twice the size of a human proportion head the hands are huge the torso is shorter and the legs are also shorter now at this scale, your typical figure is 28 millimeters to the eye, the eye of the figure, which means that most of these would average around between 30 and 32 millimeters tall. Now, if you go for smaller figures, like a halfling or a gnome, instead of being that much shorter, they're not quite as much shorter. Uh, typical dwarf figure instead of being four foot tall might be almost five feet tall in comparison whereas a halfling or gnome instead of three foot or three foot six might be four to four and a half feet that's to minimize the same problems that you have with human figures to begin with the shrinking of the head the hands the feet and ankles on the other hand however Things that are larger than six feet, like a troll, or an ogre, or a bugbear, might be actually, in proportion on the miniature, even larger. Just to emphasize the size and intimidation of these beasts. I mean, a typical ogre is supposed to be, what, eight and a half, nine feet tall? But your typical miniature... They're not just, in scale, closer to 11 or 12 feet tall. They also tend to be even broader and chubbier, more muscular than what an ogre might be. So, you know, um, just to compare, here's that same miniature from earlier. See? And you see how much larger, this is almost 12, this would be almost 12 feet tall in proportion. And yet it doesn't look wrong. 
you know, not to our eyes. It's that's how it happens sometimes. It also has much larger hands, head, and feet. But even the head is understated more, so it's not that much larger, but it's still larger than it would be to stay in proportion. Well, that's basically why I do the proportions I do on the figures that I make. And that applies equally on both male and female characters, which does mean that on the female characters, certain attributes tend to be slightly exaggerated. Not because I have a, a thing for, for that, but because, well, if you put you know normal B cup on a typical 28 millimeter miniature, you'd be easily forgiven for mistaking the figure for a male elf. So, I would like to thank you for watching this video. Don't forget, down there, subscribe, hit the like button, the usual YouTuber jazz, and uh, have a wonderful day, and don't stop painting.